What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to Stories. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and check out this Leverly game. I'm on a load screen right now. I don't know if you would notice that, but I'm just chilling, waiting for little bubbles to fill on up. But in the previous episode, we had decided to go meditate on a mountain after murdering a bunch of people. Like, we had really... We had gone down the path of absorbing darkness one more time just to make sure that there wasn't any, any light to be found in the abyss. And I'm pretty sure there was like a little flicker of match light in there somewhere. So we're checking it out right now and seeing what's going to happen. Why were there raven scouts here in the empty mountains? Was there nowhere he could find peace and quiet? There were other ravens here too. Shadowy ones. Transparent, lining the path. Ghosts. They cawed as he passed, but they didn't try to stop him. Spectators. Had he really killed that many ravens? I went to a sermon one time where I was like in church when I was a little kid because my parents made me go to church like 500 times a week. And there was a sermon. It's like the only sermon that I ever remembered from going to church. He had like all these different potatoes and they, it was a kid's sermon. And they had little hats and like little faces and they were like spectators dictators procrastinators or something i don't know i don't remember it that well i wasn't paying attention but anyways we're dealing with ghostesses right now this is what happens when you murder too many people eventually the ghostesses come after you i think we can probably go off this way i'm gonna try and keep an eye out for anything oh no raven. I don't feel like this is doing what I want it to do. Hold on a second. There we go. I felt like my charge wasn't working. Oh, there was one of these little buffy guys back up in here. And I don't mean of the kind that like watches a lot of vampire related television. And Actually, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a pretty good show. It wasn't bad. I went back and watched it and I always have trouble when I go back and watch shows from like the 80s and the 90s. Because just the visuals and like the clothing and everything's out of style and it's all changed around and I just have trouble getting into it. But I actually really, really liked Buffy. I couldn't get into the X-Files for that reason. It was just way too early 90s for me. I'm like, eh, I lived through it. No thanks. Like a doofus of ravens? It's obviously not going to be as awesome as a murder of crows. A murder of crows is like the coolest thing I've ever heard. I actually would suggest... Okay, I'm going to get stomped in my face. Hold on. What I would suggest is actually leaving the buff bots up because they allow you to get your combo meter like way higher, which is pretty sweet stuff if you can pull it off. Let me get a little fiery guy over here, and then I'm going to run off to this side. And shut up my alarm. See, I leave myself like 400 alarm. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I leave myself like 400 alarms a day because I don't wake up on the first one or the second one or the third one. And so the only... He saw her. Zenobia. She was a ghost, too. She ran off when she saw him. How could a ghost be afraid? He followed her. He had to. It was more a float than a run, but... I guess we're following Zenobia, who has the additive comfort of having one of the only names with a Z inside of it, aside from Zelda. I knew somebody named Zelda, but she was an older lady. She was... Hmm, where I know that lady from... I knew a lady named Zelda, but she was like 80 years old when I was like 10 years old. It was definitely like an old school name. I would like for you, there you go, to attack the one over there. I feel like the targeting's changed around on me a little bit. Like he's less likely to go after things that are further away off to one side. Over here we've got to decide which direction we want to go in. And I don't recall. Hmm... Man, I don't really care which way we go either. I'm just going to go the way that I've already cleared out. It's easiest this way. Let's go have a little look-see. This would be the perfect place for a tic-tac-toe board. Kind of. As long as the corners don't... I don't want to talk about tic-tac-toe, though. Tic-tac-toe, like, ruined my college experience. No joke. Like, tic-tac-toe is the worst. I had to plan out a... I had to program a game one time that the basis was it was one of my assignments for one of my programming classes and it damn near killed me I almost hyperventilated and had anxiety attacks over that project I had to make like a modified tic-tac-toe board and it had like a whole bunch of Zenobia's ghost had he gone mad seeing ghosts was she running from him or leading him somewhere he'd come here to be alone but he'd never been less alone in his life 
Every raven he had slain haunted these rocks. Was this who he was? A killer. He was terribly good at killing. He was an adventurer. Or was that just another word for killer? Whisper the stone. I feel like that stone is like that really dickish friend that you have that's always getting you into trouble by giving you bad advice. He's like constantly just that guy egging you on. And then you look back at the last couple weeks and you're like, holy shit, he was the origin point for everything that went wrong last week. An elevator. Or a giant eagle. Something. I've got the shadow blade this time around. We can go this way. I've never been this way before. Let's have a look-see here. If I can avoid my platform from crumbling everywhere. Good god. Gravity, you crazy. I am gonna start whooping on these guys. Oh, I didn't see that one. That one was my fault. Normally I would have some complaint or some way to diffuse blame for myself, but that one was my fault. That one was totally my fault. I just didn't even see it. We've got a treasure chest and then a teleporter. It's got a bunch of health inside of it because we've collected every single gemstone in the game. The game actually lacks a lot of content. You There's not enough content to make it all the way through the game while still unlocking stuff, unfortunately. The swords take forever to unlock, so I'm still working on those. However, when it comes to the little runestone things, those dissipate all too quickly. Oh, they can buff each other too? That's funny. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Ah, it was from two directions at once. I tried, but I couldn't snap fast enough. Couldn't snap fast enough. Although we didn't take damage, did we? I thought we got hit right there, but maybe I've got some kind of life drain or something going on. Break all those crystals real quick because I don't like things to maintain their crystallographic integrity. Well, I'm in the area. No thank you, Crystal. You need to fall over and die. Having like a major allergy attack today. It's the worst. I hate allergies. Allergies, who evolved this? We need to find the human being who evolved this. The first person that like evolved and was like, I'm going to have this shitty thing where I get really, really itchy when plants have sex. And we need to blame them for it. And we need to put them in a history book and be like, this is the douchebag who has done this to us. He did this. He chose to evolve this, and it's all his fault. I think I'm allergic to my cats, but only like one season when they're shedding. The rest of the time, I don't have it, but for two or three months, which coincidentally are their kitty shedding seasons, I tend to be quite itchy in the mouth, nasal region, ears. Depends how bad it gets. When it's really, really bad, my ears itch all on the inside and stuff, too. It's weird. I hate it. I would like to be right... Oh. he had to do. The rebellion. Wasn't there a battle coming soon? There'd be ravens to kill. Even an emperor. Such a killing. Much wow. Ooh, he'd never been so excited. I've got. Hmm. Well. Maybe I'll go with the counter slowdown, since I've been having trouble lately with like two or three attacking me at the same time and not following kung fu movie rules. At the end of the mountain path, Zenobia awaited him. Why did you kill me? She said. I was your prisoner, and I loved you. I needed the power, he said. Haven't you heard? There's a war on. Then what's your excuse for killing me? Asked his old friend Lapino, stepping out of the shadows. Because a filthy traitor, said Renardo. For once, Lapino didn't reply. The demon. The demon has twisted you, said Zenobia. Abandon the stone. You've lost too much already. Her words bit deeper than any sword ever had. So he shook his head. And once again, swung his blade through her and Lapino. It had to all mean something. If he gave up the stone now, he would have sacrificed Zenobia and Lapino for nothing. So, 
Renato set course for the Imperial fleet, where he would end it all. The Emperor, the war, the madness. Kind of disappointed right now that I can't find the ending for the Iblis Stone. Like, we've tried basically every path so far with the Iblis Stone, and we just can't seem to find, like, the proper path that a... You've got to try and destroy it. That's the only thing that we haven't done so far, is taking the Iblis Stone and then going after the Armature. So I'm assuming we're going to have to do that after this one, just to give it another go. It's just like... Argh! That's such an unsatisfying ending, though. I don't want to do that. Renato boarded an Imperial ship. No one could stop him slashing his way towards the Emperor. Yes, that was right. To give up now would be to lose everything for nothing. But if he could liberate the land from the Mad Emperor, then he could give up the stone in peace. And those were absolutely his own thoughts. Not the stone manipulating him. Right? Oh, yes! Exalted the stone. He could hear a tiny voice within him. Don't kill the Emperor. A stone will eat your soul. Is it madness? I have to kill the Emperor, he told himself. That's what it meant to be a hero. To do what had to be done, no matter how terrible the cost. Yes. And then you can have peace. Promised the stone. Especially when the cost is fifty dollars. The tiny voice, whatever it was, was silent. He couldn't see ghosts around him, but he could feel them. If he gave up now, they would be angry. They would have all died for nothing. Who could give up this kind of power? Could anyone? He was just a fox with a talent for sword. How had this bird come to him? I don't know if this is going to turn out differently, but I doubt it. I, I bet we have to get the armature, and then we got to go get the other stone thing, and then we got to... We're going to have to combine them, and that's going to be the ending for the Iblis stone. A little disappointed, because I'm going to have to do the same storyline again. Just because I wanted to see what happened when you went up on the mountain and talked to the ghost. But it'll be alright. One thing at a time. There you go. You better kill those ghosty things. They got buffs flying all over the place. They are not making this easy on us. That's right. I teleport too. You're not the only one with tele teleportational talents. It's early. This is my first episode of the day. So you have to forgive me. I'm going to be tongue-tied. Barely functioning due to allergies and everything else today. Normally, it all calms down after like the second episode. It gets a little bit better. Not the allergies, but you know, the commentary. After I relax for a little bit, eventually it starts to go the way that I want it to go. Just can't like hyper focus on it too much. That used to get me in trouble all the time when I first started doing commentary on YouTube. Like I'd be too worried about my commentary being good or being acceptable. Now I just go with the flow. Yeah, whatever. He screwed up last time, but he had a good feeling about this time. You should not have a good feeling about this time because I bet we're just going to suck the sun in again. And that is the wrong feeling to have right now. I need you to go away. Oh, we got you now. I got that ass, Ravens. I got that ass. It's kind of like I got your nose, but like the adult version. You know, when you got like a little kid, you're like, oop, I got your nose. I got that ass is how we do that same thing with adults. Wow, the great maw of come slay me. He could just fly away right now. He'd just fly away and I'd never be able to catch him. Okay, I might be able to catch him, but we could at least forestall it a little while longer. At least put up some resistance. The Emperor was cowering in front of his ship. Please don't kill me croaked Emperor Isengrim III. Here, take the crown. I, 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 I don't want it anymore. Mm. You must kill him. Why not his troops? You must send us mm. oh, Please, uh, have mercy. The rebellion uh, is us one. Or, 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 or you can be Emperor. 
I'll just go be uh, a, a scientist or minstrel or sell gummy bears. Yeah, yeah, I promise not to bother you. It's your moment. With all the love he'd ever had for Zenobia, for Lupino, for the Kit Foxes he would never have, Renato raised his sword. And Renato plunged his sword into his own chest. Wait. What? Renato screamed as his life force ebbed into the stone and surged back into him and ebbed out and surged back in. Screamed the stone. It began to heat up. What have you done? The stone began to glow. It became white hot. It became lava. I'm nice knowing you, said Renato, as the lava ran like butter. And he died. Huzzah! The ending actually took a turn. To some of the choices he'd faced before. Maybe there were new paths that had opened up. Like those doors he was opening up all over the map that took him to new treasures and around his enemies. And he hadn't learned anything new this time. He'd done the same thing twice, yet expected a different outcome. Technically, it was a different outcome. The first time, we consumed the entire universe in a black hole. The second time, we stabbed ourselves in the chest with a sword after murdering all of our loved ones. I mean, it didn't go that badly. So we need the Zenobia truth. I thought we needed the stone truth. Okay, apparently it's just been a while since I played last. So we need the Zenobia truth. We can make this happen. He just fluttered to the beginning once again. Faster than before. And he fell. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it to take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lupino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lupino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Let's... Oh, I don't know. I mean, you can basically start at any point and end up with Zenobia's story. She's involved in all of them, so I'm assuming we can take, like, a detour at some point and then fix it. Let's go after... Eh. We'll just go after Lapino because I know that's a guaranteed way to get to Zenobia the quickest. Apparently, the Mad Rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. Lapino's frantic message said that the Ravens were going to kill him for being a rebel spy. And that he had a clever plan. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Or so Lapino had told him over the far speaker anyway. That's kind of suspicion number one right there. Is like, how does he have access to a far speaker if he's been captured? I don't know. Eventually we'll find our way to the end. All I want to do is get the ultimate truth. I just want to unlock that thingy on the book and then we go. I feel like I've taken the long way around, but we have unlocked a lot of endings, so. And apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had... Had everybody fled the raven? It's weird that he doesn't remember what happened each time he goes back through. Like, he should know why the village is empty at this point. 
Man, I am really good at killing ravens. Like, we have talent for this. Can you eat ravens? Because if you can, like, deep fry ravens and stuff, I feel like it's probably a really good plan to open a restaurant or something. I don't know if that's generally looked down upon in this universe that we're a part of, but... I mean, hey, why let it go to waste, you know? A 95 hit combo. Renato had been here, at this exact place, at this exact time. But this time, there were so many more ravens. There are indeed. Oh yeah, we got a free level up for winning the campaign, so let's take that. What does this do? Slow down time after a separate attack? Okay. I will probably... Which of these do I like better? More stamina would be chill. I can't make up my mind, so I'm just going to pick one. Dash through enemies. Eh. I'll probably just go with more health. Let's go ahead and open this thing on up. Chase that damn thing. Ow, I got clubbed in my face in exchange for killing a ghost. Well, fine then. I guess that's just how life's going to go today. All I want to do is bring this story to its conclusion. I don't even care about all the other stuff. Like, I just want it to be over. I want it to be done. And they keep giving me the runaround. I keep picking those random little options with a lock and key next to them. And I keep not getting satisfaction. Ravens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Well, unless he really was a traitor. Obviously. Then they'd probably pin a medal on his chest. Or eat him and then pin a medal on his chest. Pin a medal on the plate that they served him on? I don't know. It wasn't too bad. I could have done better, but I could have done worse. Lapino would betray him. But now Renato knew that. What would Lapino do if he knew that Lapino was going to betray him? Well, he'd concoct some crazy scheme, wouldn't he? That used Lapino's betrayal against him and it would blow up in his face. Maybe he would stop thinking this. Well, that would be a first. I never overthink anything. Just because I usually don't get that far. Why stress about it? Just let it happen, you know? Dirty and bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renato recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows, and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and, oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Looks like it's time to steal the Emperor's daughter. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been close. She'd told him things no one else knew. But she never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the Master Spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right, said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right. Huzzah.
So after Zenobia, we go. Why is her dad a frog if she's a cat? Is she adopted? She has to be adopted. A frog can't make a cat. That's just simple science. That's basic science and physics. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Would he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Yes, he could, and we will. My name is Splattercat. This is the end of stories. I will see you all in the next episode. Hi, do, everybody. Thanks for stopping on by.